All right, C4 Labs sending me the new Crystal Mist case now with a 40 millimeter fan and for the Raspberry Pi 4. But something I found along the review is it works for Raspberry Pi 3 too. Very versatile case here. So this is basically just a how to build it video. We take some temps towards the end of it. Um, it's not like a super cooling case, but it's a nice mid-range case with some really nice customization opportunity there. And it comes with the heat sinks, the fan, and everything else you're going to need except a screwdriver. So let's jump into it. Good morning, YouTube, Raspberry Pi 4 and C4 Labs, throwing me three new cases to check out. They've made really cool cases in the past using a lot of wood. They use a lot of layer cases as well. They sent me this TIE Fighter as a gift. It was really cool. And then the Crystal Virtue Mist. Now, this variant, this has many variations. You can get it with black, clear. I went with kind of the, they call it mist, but it's kind of like a, you know, it's the same like the, um, oh, see, this one has a stand as well. Look, they have their, just their stands. Very cool. So this is just a stand for it. You can set the pie on top of it. And um, so you'll see that it's not quite 100% clear. It's actually kind of frosted. Very well packaged, very, very well packaged. C4 Labs is located in Washington. I believe they ship internationally. And they ship fast, that's for sure. Now, a lot of little pieces. These ones are a little harder to assemble. And you gotta be careful, because you can break layers really easily. I know they have really good customer service though. Oh, that's really cool. So mine has both front plates in it, both for the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B, and then 4. So you really only have to switch these two out. So that's cool. I'm not sure if that's with all of them, but it looks like you have the option between the two. So I don't even need this piece because I'm putting it in a Raspberry Pi 4. So as you see with the Raspberry Pi 3, or four, it's not gonna fit. There's no big HDMI, it's all micro or mini. And, but this one will fit just fine, see, on that, on that front plate there. So that's what we're working with here. Now, the first pro tip when, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this case out of the way. The first pro tip, the other thing they have is these really nice rubbers, and they do come with heat sinks as well. So that's a nice bonus. Now, Basically, these cases, you just stack them. It's just a stacking case, right? You just do layer by layer, layer by layer. And now, a lot of people think these are cheap cases because there are a lot of people like in uh, Shenzhen and you know Taiwan where you can get these super cheap. But I have to say the craftsmanship you're about to see and the color customization that you're able to do with this and then just some of the minute details, not to mention, look how big this fan is. That is a huge, I think it's a 40 millimeter fan, yeah. That's a huge fan. That's not the type of fans you're gonna be seeing on some of these cheaper cases. Speaking of Shenzhen, this is where the fan's from. Let's get started with this. Pro tip is get like a wet cloth or something or dampen these and this stuff comes right off. Differentiates this is this frosted glass. Here's the bottom. That looks really cool. I don't know how well you can see that, but that with the frost, really nice. See how it's frosted? And then the frost on the top, they call it mist. Pretty cool, right? That's why I want to check it out. Now, I think the middle pieces, the clear pieces, he interchanges those for different, you know, different um, builds. Like if you want to go all clear, you can do that. Now let's go ahead, peel off the paper. Warm water, water, there you go. Oh, I like how they included this in the beginning. Remove SD card. I see this all the time. This is how you break SD cards as you leave them in your pie. Yes. They'll snap right off and you will cry, especially if they're any big whatsoever. Okay, so now we gotta find the bottom. And I, you can see that the bottom, that these, 
you know, the sm these little wall mounts, the smaller part of the hole faces your left. SD card faces your left. That's how you know you're on the right side. Um, the other thing is that these are on the upper portion, not the lower portion. So this is how it should, and it should be spelled backwards, right? Because that's the bottom right there underneath, okay? So we start with the bottom, and we start with our, our long screws we're going to build up. We also have, with our heat sinks, I wonder when they say to put on the heat sinks. Okay, they don't have it on here when to put the heat sinks on. I would put it on now, to be honest with you. So you want the heat sinks, go ahead and put them on your pie right now. I'm not gonna put them on my pie because this pie gets used in a bunch of different cases and sometimes the cases don't always fit a heat sink. So um, with these little plungers, you want to, see I put them in like this. I put them in upside down so that you have a soft top because otherwise, so these are the two ways you could potentially put the screws on and you see when you hide it in the plunger, now you're not going to have metal on whatever surface you have it on. It's a nice soft, uh, you know, a nice soft rubber foot. Okay. All right. And now let's thread them through. And here's a little pro move for you. Grab the base, boom, flip it like that. So you don't have to worry about them falling out. All right, and it's pretty obvious where the SD card goes and the smaller side goes in the front here. One. All right, step four, we've got the C bracket. So it's not this one, it's not that one, it's not, here's all my L, like three L's. Here is my C bracket. And that just goes right on here. This one's super flimsy, so just be careful on that. All right, next up, or. See, this is where they said the or, because it depends if you have a Raspberry Pi 3, you go with that, but we have the four, so we're not using that. We're using this one. And the 3.5 auxiliary should go towards the left. Oh, you gotta do it at the same time with the Pi. I was like, yeah, it's not gonna stay in there. So put it on your Pi. Right, align it with your Raspberry Pi, and then drop them both in. Should be pretty snug fit. Well, actually that felt pretty good. Just don't push anything too hard. Okay, we now have the Pi and the front panel in. Now we've got the L brackets, and from the looks of it, these are all the same. Let me see, one, two, three. Yes, these are all the same. So you just grab one of the three and you also need a corner piece when you have three corner pieces here. Three corner pieces, three L brackets. Ah, I see. These go like that. And it's the small piece that goes on this side, on the right. Another small piece. You could probably just do all three small pieces, right? Oh no, you only gotta do two first. Two first. And then there's this one that goes in between the last one. Mm, okay, no, it goes like this. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Now we got the last L after that piece. Okay. And then the last corner piece. And then we're off to the, ooh, that little, oh, this one is frosted as well. Very nice. And it looks like you want the longer side there. Put that in there. Okay, it's a little like ladder looking piece. This is where we mount the fan. There's many debates on which way to put the fan. Typically I put label side towards the pie. And now we got this pack of mounts for the, pretty much done with everything, except the top plate now. 
the closing piece is, and then the top piece, which is gonna house the fan. So the house fan, we got screws, and then we've got these little grommets, which are really cool, these flush grommets. I'm just gonna hand tighten at first and then go in for a screwdriver once I get them all four mounted. Oh, that is something I should have oriented was where I wanted the wires to come out. But this is actually fine where I have them. But just keep that in mind that I'm actually going to mount it like this. So it's actually going to work out just fine because that's going to go down and then the wires. So just make sure you orient the fan where the, the raspberry, the stems of the raspberry are facing the USB ports. Oh, see, we missed a piece here. You actually want to do the one more clear and then we plug in our fan so pin six in the back is a ground so that one's pretty simple it's just that third pin down on the back row we're gonna go and put it on there and now you have two options here you have five volt or three point three volt three point three volts gonna be the corner closest to my finger here in the corner those two back row are both five volt I'm gonna go five volt because I want to get maximum performance here Fan noise doesn't really bother me. Yeah, you need to navigate that cable underneath that last plastic piece to really get this thing to settle properly. So watch out for that wire if you're having any kind of flexing on the top. The other thing with this is even if you can't screw these all in, like that one came out, once you get one started, it's really gonna apply some pressure on the whole unit, and it's gonna make it a lot easier once you get one or two of these kind of locked in to get the rest, so don't trip. All right, and there we have it. You have a hole there if you want to run wires to the GPIO. And then the frosted bottom. And if you're wondering what that hole is for, it's actually for the Raspberry Pi 3, which has a module that you can put heat sink on underneath there. So really cool, that's powered up. Yeah, 1.5, cool. So not bad. And I just see it's lowering really fast. Ah, pretty quick. That fan's helping quite a bit. Let's just run it again, see how high we can get it. 43, 42. It's gonna drop really fast though. See? Not bad. All right, so the other thing is I don't have heat sinks on there, so with the heat sinks you can see about two, three degrees less. It's plenty good for cooling and overclocking, trust me. I've been through tens and tens of cases and it's a good solid one. As you heard, the fan's kind of loud at the five volts, but that was right next to the microphone. It's honestly, if it's away from you a little bit, you won't even hear it, um, but it's it's working really well. Um, overall, I really like it. I like that it's backwards compatible, so when you buy a kit like this, you, you can kind of use it for different cases. The versatility is really nice. Um, it looks beautiful. You know, I've seen the wood grain one. I've seen the clear one now. Honestly, I can't pick a favorite. They're all really nice. Fits in there just just great and like i said i think these are like around twenty dollars so with a, a case with a fan and you can customize the look not bad and heat sinks so um the only thing it doesn't come with is a screwdriver and i'm assuming most of you out there have one um, a lot of really nice craftsmanship here got to give this one an a i'm really digging it and i'm looking forward to checking out a couple other cases that they sent me but that's what i think let me know what you all think don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one